All right, the NHL draft is wrapped up. It legitimately took them less time to get through rounds two through seven than it did to get them through round one. I will never get over that commercial break they took before Vegas took with the 32nd pick. That will always send me into a spiral, but whatever. Let's recap what the Blue Jackets got in this draft, starting with round one. I mentioned this in a video yesterday, obviously, but I do want to say it again. This isn't a joke. This isn't wishful thinking. The Columbus Blue Jackets draft Adam Fantilli third overall, so you figure he's going to be the ideal you know, center to build around for the future. He might be the top line center before next season is done in Columbus. Then you move on to the next day in round two. They pick Gavin Brindley, 34th overall. He was Adam Fentilli's line mate at Michigan. So the Blue Jackets drafting another Wolverine, one more on the roster. Why not, I guess? He can play center, although since he was on the line with Adam Fantilli, he mostly played on the wing that year. And he is a bit uh, like undersized, although I think if he's good at hockey, then he'll be able to overcome that. And if he plays with Snarl, I think he'll be he'll fit in he'll fit in with the organization just fine. Then move on to round three. They draft William Whitelaw with the 66th overall pick. He's a winger out of the US USHL with the Youngstown Phantoms. I believe that team just won their the championship of that league if I'm if I'm correct the you know William Whitelaw is on the smaller side as well but again I feel like if he's good enough at hockey and he plays with enough determination and, and grit and and all those all those intangibles you can mention he can definitely overcome that and the organization seems very much willing to to look past the the measurables on that then you go to the fourth round. They drafted Andrew Strathman at number 98 defenseman. And he was uh, William Whitelaw's teammate in Youngstown as well. He's a defenseman, I guess. I, I saw some people putting the the undersized tag for a defenseman on him at 5'11", which I understand he's not like a 6'5", huge hulking guy or anything. But I don't necessarily think 5'11", is all that small for a defenseman. Maybe you... you I mean, like if he bulks up, then 5'11 won't be an issue at all. And then still in the fourth round, the, the Blue Jackets drafted Luca Pinelli. I think that's how it's pronounced uh, with the 114th overall pick that they got out of the Oliver Bjorkstrand trade. Center with out of the OHL from Ottawa. Another shorter player, but again, like I've like I've been saying, if they're good at hockey and they're able to produce and adapt their games, the the the, the shortness won't won't be too much of a hindrance for them. And another another center for the Blue Jackets, you can't really have too many. If you do have too many to fill out the roster, and you need to move one over to wing, then you can just move them over to the wing. It's not that huge of a deal. And then in the fifth round, the Blue Jackets drafting Melvin Strahl with the 156th overall pick that they got from the Gus Nyquist trade with Minnesota. He is a goalie from the Swedish Junior League. The Blue Jackets definitely needing some more goalie prospects with Daniil Tarasov probably graduating from that true prospect kind of image of him. He's definitely sticking around on the NHL roster. It would require waivers to send him to Cleveland and some other team would probably nab him up. So Tarasov making that jump to the NHL, you definitely need some goalies to fill that pipeline there. The Blue Jackets didn't have any six round picks. They traded theirs away to the Coyotes to get to get rid of Jake Voracek's contract. So moving on to the seventh round, the Blue Jackets drafting Oiva Keskinen, I might have screwed that up, but that's how my uh, my English brain and tongue interpret that name at the pick number 194. He is a center from the Finnish Junior League. He's six foot tall, and again, like I just said, you can't really ever have too many centers, if I do say so myself. So I, at this point, you're just kind of throwing darts on a wall, and, and hopefully one of these guys sticks and makes it to the league, but at this point, you're just kind of you're taking a lot of flyers on guys. And then another pick in round seven, Tyler Peddle with the 224th overall pick, the final pick of the NHL draft. The Blue Jackets acquired this pick at the draft from Vegas in exchange for the Blue Jackets 2024 seventh round pick. So uh, I guess, you know, good, good for Tyler Peddle to get drafted, a winger out of the QMJHL out of Drummondville. Again, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it in, in, over there in, in French Canada, but I, you know, that's how my, my English brain and tongue interpret that. He was at the draft. Him and his family were in attendance in Nashville. So that was a really nice moment to see him and his family react to him getting picked as the final name called in the NHL draft. Good on him to wait because honestly, if I was there and, and I was anticipated it might maybe get called and, and they didn't say my name yet, I might've just up and left and gotten, you know, went to a restaurant or something, but you know, good for Tyler for, to, you know, to wait on that, on that moment for him. And so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the Blue Jackets draft. 
Uh, tomorrow is a kind of a calm day, and then July 1st, free agency starts, and then all that madness happens. So until then, that was the video. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about the Blue Jackets draft down the down in the comments below. I know I've seen a lot of people with with you know metrics and draft formulas saying this was a really good draft for the Blue Jackets, but we won't really know until a few years down the road when a lot of these guys. Uh, flesh out their careers and besides from Adam Fantilli we probably won't see these guys for another year or two at least uh, so thank you all for watching this far into the video and I will see you at the next one